All right, so in this video, what we're going to talk about is getting familiar with a FANUC robot pendant, right? So we're actually talking about a six axis FANUC robot pendant and uh, really how to jog, how to get around, how to do things, uh, how to navigate it, make it a real quick video so that you're able to actually see this. Now, this is a simulation. So keep in mind on a real pendant, you will have a dead man switch that you have to hold on the back of it that will be about midways that you you know have to be between contacts to so make sure that you are in full control over it. Safety is at the utmost importance when it comes to robotics, so keep that in mind. Um, now, when it comes down to it, always make sure that you hit your reset button. And if you are trying to jog a system, it's best you come up here to your function key and then abort all. Now that's generally speaking because the robot will have already been in command for a to, to be running a, a set program. And what you want to do is you want to actually abort all programs. So this does give you full control. And with this said, at, while you're holding the actual uh, dead man switch on the back of the pendant, you'll hold the shift key. And then I want you to understand too that the speed controls are down here at the very bottom. So you'll see, I want you to change the speed at least down to about 30 or maybe even down to 20. And then go ahead and, and try, to, try to move an axis. So, and the reason I say that is because 90% of FANUC robots are working in very, very tight areas. And the reason I say uh, also to, to do that in low speed is so that you know exactly what direction that you will be traveling. A lot of times, uh, this thing is very simple because, you know, an X, an X plus is obviously one direction and an X negative is in the other direction. Now, we're moving axis six down or axis one down here. Um, now, that's the base. So you can see that. And the reasoning, again, behind moving slow is because sometimes I've seen these robots be mounted upside down where uh they were they weren't on the floor they were actually upside down so it actually made everything a little bit different as far as distorting which way you thought you were going so uh, just keep in mind the x uh joint one down here is uh, the base that's going to be axis one joint two which is the we're going to move the y right here this is going to be right here and we can speed this up now as we go right we can speed that up, move that back and forth, make sure we do have full command and we are actually doing that right. Um, and again, when it comes down to it, now we can do our third axis, which is our joint three. And you see what that specific axis does. Now again, uh, this would be, again, with you holding the shift key and also the dead man switch. Now the, the next three axes, are going to be uh, moving the end effector, which one is axis R1 is joint four. And that's right here. The next one is going to be moving it up and down, which is axis five or joint five. And the next one is going to be the end effector. I'm not gonna jog it because you can't see the end effector itself, but if you had an end effector on there, if we had an end effector on this example, you could easily see that moving back and forth. Now, um, also too, we have the ability to do uh, standard motion as far as this goes. Now, what we'll do is we'll come in and say we wanna, now we only have one program in this, but say I wanna jog through a program, right? I can easily open the program right here and I can go down, make sure I'm holding the dead man switch and I'm holding the, the shift key and I can push forward. Now, this is gonna automatically run that whole code. So just keep in mind, there, this is going to automatically run the complete program that you have selected. Now, what if you now there's going to be a question? What if you wanted to just check a certain part of it, or what if you wanted to touch up a position? Right? You can actually go into step mode, and what that does is is um, step mode allows you to step sequentially one you know one at a time through this. So if I go forward, and it's going to go to the next position. Okay, so that's position two. If I go forward again, it's gonna to go to that. Now, if I wanted to go backwards, I can do that as well. So keep that in mind. So if, if say for instance, you, you 
went forward and you said, okay, that there's a problem right there. I need to touch this position up. What you can do at this point in time right here is you can come over here and you can jog that axis, right? Let's just say we want to jog this a little bit forward over here and we wanted to touch that axis up. So now we've recorded a new position for over here. So now if we go and run that back, we're going to go to a new position right here. And then if we move it forward, we're going to go down to the same exact position we had before. So just keep in mind again, and, and this is all controlled by speed, right? So you can, you can adjust the speeds as fast as you want to. I highly, highly recommend you do this slowly. You do not do it fast. Uh, but again, when you, and also too, if you, if you entered into step mode, always exit step mode. So step mode, if, if step mode is active, it's going to be highlighted up top. And if it's not active, you'll see that it's not highlighted. So that means it's an ability to be run in automatic. Now, uh, again, if you were to press this forward and, and backward button right now with the shift key in and the, the dead man switch in, it will run the full command. Now I am going to assume that the axis is in the correct position um, because again, this is a simulation, but I wanted to actually show you exactly what to do and what to expect by this, right? So um, key components are key things that we need to th take away from this. Um, coming over here, you go to reset, right? You're going to reset everything. Make sure you have the dead man switch pushed in. Uh, make sure you have, if you're trying to jog, make sure you hold the shift key and you jog whichever axis you want to act, you know, jog. Make sure your speeds are down very low, at least again, 35 or 30. Um, and then make sure you're going the correct direction. Verify and look and make sure you're going the direction you are assuming that you're going. Because again, we all make mistakes and we're all just human. So, you know, when it comes down to it, just use precaution when it comes to robotics and then make sure you're doing that right. Now, again, you can touch up all the positions in this. Um, and again, we'll come back and get out of this. We'll go back to our positions and let's see data. I believe it's in status. Uh, 3d right here we'll go to actual position so you can see the actual positions of the axes right here so if I were to run that you'll see axis or joint one is the one running right now so you see that the joint one is the one running and we'll stop that and if we want to run joint two we can run joint two you can see that and then joint three so now you're starting to kind of get the understanding of that so now just understanding the six axis robot and the way each uh, axis or joint is, right? Joint one being at the bottom, joint two, joint three, joint four, five, and six are all doing basically the arm and the end effector and uh, whatever tooling you have on there. Um, so basically what I wanted to get you familiar with is how to actually jog and use certain key functions and, you know, actually being able to troubleshoot and move around inside of the actual pendant. All right. So with that said, hopefully you learned a lot from this video. See you guys on the next.